Hello and welcome to the first episode of the new monthly variety show, Hey, That's Easy. I'm your host, Lawton Luntz. Tonight's episode features quick and easy side dishes and alternatives to add to your Thanksgiving table this year. Whether you have a small gathering or spending the holiday virtual, we hope you find something new tonight to try or add this year. Thankfully, we have multiple video submissions from numerous places. Joining us tonight is Ava and Vari. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Lawton. Hi, <laughs> Always to exciting to be doing something with you guys. I'm so excited oh. for tonight. We got an awesome lineup. Yep, just two days away, and then we're all going to be eating together. And I got to be honest, when our production team was putting this show together, I didn't see anything that wasn't appetizing. Right? I mean, I'm always on a low carb diet, so it's really hard for me to watch this. <laughs> right, right. Great alternatives. Uh, there's just so much to come up for tonight, and and on tonight's episode, we have. Special guest, Baltimore's own Chef Kayla will be joining us. She's going to give us a chef expertise on Thanksgiving and showcase an easy dish for us all to try. But up first, we begin on Thanksgiving morning with Rich. He sent in a video for a Thanksgiving-inspired smoothie. Take a look. Hi, my name is Rich, and I'm hopefully going to show you how to make something using the hero of every holiday table, jelly cranberry sauce. Now the start of this, and probably the hardest part, is going to be that you have to get the jelly cranberry sauce out of the can. Go to the internet, lots of videos on the subject. And the joy of this being a cooking show is that I already have a bowl full of it. What we're going to be making today is jelly cranberry sauce smoothie. It's relatively simple. Anybody can make it. And let me show you how. First, you take a half a cup of cranberry sauce. Pour it in the blender. Second ingredient, Greek yogurt. Now I've chosen low fat yogurt and it's flavored with vanilla, vibrant vanilla as a matter of fact. You can use plain vanilla or you can use plain yogurt I should say. If you want to add vanilla you can use those little really expensive jars. I just decided to go right with the flavored yogurt. With that, Half a spoonful of that. This can get really messy if you have lousy aim. Third ingredient, milk. Lots of people are using almond milk. Lots of people are using plant-based milk. I'm going with something new and different. It's milk from a cow. And what you want there, and if you ever made a smoothie, you can add more or less depending on the thickness that you want. Ideally, put a cup of it in there. Fourth ingredient, and the one that gives it a little bit more of a kick, a little bit more of a full-bodied flavor, is going to be honey. Now, a lot of people will buy your wholesome, organic, grade-A honey. No good. Forget it. Ever since you were five, you knew the truth. Real honey comes from a bear. Ideally, put about a tablespoon in there. Just mix it in. Again, you can vary that to your taste, but on the first time out, Use a tablespoon. That's it. That's all your ingredients. Put it in a blender, find the smoothie switch, and hit it. <laughs> Depending on how thick and how thin you might want your smoothie, you can let that go longer, shorter, but 90 seconds is kind of the minimum. You've got it right here. Jellied cranberry sauce smoothie. You can have this for breakfast the day after a holiday, or you can have it as a late night snack or lunch. Actually, I guess you could have it anytime you want. I'm not the one to tell you what to do. I will tell you this, enjoy. I love it. Rich is, is <laughs> like a natural, right? <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> you should have his own show somewhere. I know. It's so good. Now, the question is, Ava, are you trying this smoothie Thanksgiving morning? Ugh, I mean, it looks healthy, but I've never thought about cranberries from a can in a smoothie. So I, I'd like hey, to try I like it. The fact that he, he gave the, uh, the option to use almond milk or if someone is, you know, on, on or at least trying to reduce the dairy or whatnot. That was, it was a good idea. It well, looks like healthy. Yeah, it looks like something something I would I would be interested in trying. Thank you, Rich. Awesome. <laughs> well, 
later on the show, we're, we're going to offer more easy side dishes and alternatives in a moment, of course. But mm -hmm. before we introduce our first guest, let's talk about the collaborate, like the collaboration effort with this show. This show is brought to you by Xfinity and the University of Phoenix. My role at Xfinity is centered around customer experience. I'm a local rep in Metro Detroit, and I cover communities in five cities. And a lot of what we do is trying to just support residents in those communities. And we encourage you, the viewers, to be like our residents and feel free to reach out. There's a number on your screen right now. You can feel free at any time to call or text that if you're having trouble. Let's say for an example, you call our 800 number and you're just not getting the resolution you want. No problem. Now you have a number that you can contact and we'd love to help. Myself, I, even if you're not in my area, I am more than happy to help. At least help you get in touch with someone that, that, can, that can give you the resolution you want. Now, Ava, your effort is equally as important in this partnership. For example, when a family member says, why aren't you in school this Thanksgiving? Can you tell the audience how you can help give a positive answer? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've made great alliances with hundreds of companies across the nation, Comcast being one, supporting education very heavily. In fact, uh, for them, it's a great opportunity, unlimited courses for the bachelor's degree, um, and they just support education. But if you're looking at going back to school, we can help anyone. We cater to the working adult. Um, you know, transfer credit policy, very generous, five week long undergraduate classes, six week long MBA master's courses. We have over 30 different degree options, everything from business, IT, nursing, education, you name it. We've been around since 1976 and we have over 1 million alumni. So we're doing technology right. <laughs> we're one of the pioneers. Uh, so we can definitely help you. And what I love is they give you a free application. We'll even order your transcripts for you if the college allows. Um, just some really fantastic things. And my number is there, so you can certainly text me. And I'll also see about getting a, a link in there. But if anyone's interested in learning more about how we can help you piece that degree together, finish it. Again, we cater to that working adult. So um, we're, we're the um, university that can kind of help you balance everything. And I certainly welcome any calls, any questions, nothing too big or small. Um, it's that time of year where you, you're going to meet with family. Well, you'll meet with select family members. I guess right. that's the optimal word. Possibly wearing a mask, maybe a COVID test prior. I don't know. But it's, it's a time to share good news. So um, getting to finish that degree, earning that degree finally, um, let me help you. Just text me and I'll send you that link. Thank you. Yeah, and the, the important thing is answering that question in a positive manner. And I, I love the partnerships we've worked together in the past and mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue it with this show. So thanks again. Well, Absolutely. now let's introduce our first guest, shall we? He is the host of the task force streaming on multiple platforms, including YouTube and Facebook. He is also an on-air personality at 97 won the ticket in Detroit. He has been a partner of ours for many productions prior and is also a pretty fine citizen. Let's welcome at this time, Mr. Dan Leach. How are you, sir? Honey, I got my bear, man. I got my Rich was great, by the way. How about that rich guy? Rich guy. Yeah, I think that honey is, you know, my mom, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm Jewish, so I celebrate Rosh Hashanah in the new year. And my mom, every year, gets me a big holla and a honey bear. So that's I'm in. That, that smoothie looks sick. Great to see you both. It's, it's interesting because, like, Lauren, you and I have done so many shows together, and normally I'm sitting in your chair. So it's a lot of fun to just be able to sit back, do some calisthenics, have, I drink some raw honey, I got my water here, and everything's good. Well, in addition to the hollow, what is your favorite dish for Thanksgiving? We're, we're, we got we have two days. What, what's your well? What's listen, your it's it's an impossible question. It's like saying, "What's my favorite kind of sushi?" Right. But this is the what, what comes to mind right away, and obviously turkey is the obvious answer. But I think there is nothing better than championship level stuff. If you've got top level stuffing, I've, I, there, now I remember last year, you kindly invited me over to your house. I believe I took two plates of stuffing to go <laughs> and I ate it over four straight days. So I think if you got a solid stuffing, you're, you're right in the heart. You're in the heart of the matter. <laughs> well, I got my work cut out for me. If you're coming, if you're coming back for, uh, for round two after, after your family. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. The challenge, challenge is accepted. Now, you mentioned you're a part of the, a very proud member of the Jewish community here in Detroit. What is something commonly featured on your family's table that might not be seen elsewhere? Oh, there it is. Noodle cook hall. It's the greatest. And my mom is watching the great Susie Sharo. Oh. And she has made kugel forever. And that's like, you know, she doesn't make a ton of dishes, 
but every dish she makes is top level. And she's been making kugel for my grandma's recipe going back to when she was a kid. And, and that really looks, I mean, that's not a picture of my mom's kugel because we wanted to ever make one. And my mom decided to go to Neptune the last few days. So she's going to be on a future show. But we love my mom. She did maybe spaghetti on it last night, which is very nice. Brought it over. But she, that looks like her kugel. And it's just always so rich and tasty and it's just the best. So I think that for me, and it's not like Jews have different Thanksgivings than everyone else, but there are some different dishes when yeah. you're Jewish or, you know, Irish or whatever your, your, your background is. And Kugel has always been something we've had, whether it's Thanksgiving or Hanukkah or Passover, Rosh Hashanah, but we definitely have Kugel for Thanksgiving. And that stuff lasts for abs. I mean, I can eat okay. that for a week. I might have to give it a go on Thanksgiving. Kugel! <laughs> Pretty easy to make, right? Only It's only a few ingredients. Oh, soup's easy. And, like, it's one of those things where people put their own kind of spin on it. Some people put raisins. Some people put chocolate. Like, there's a million different things you can do with Kugel. But as long as you've got, like, the main processes down, you know, getting the noodles and getting the other ingredients and getting it together, it really is not hard to make. So it's definitely worth, if someone's watching right now, they want to impress their small gathering or their virtual gathering, make some Kugel. And be like, Dan Leach told you to, and I'll be the hero of the day. Awesome. Eva, what do you think? New, are you oh, going to try some of the new cookies? Girl! No, it looks like a comfort food to me if I've ever seen it. Kind of like a cross between mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. <laughs> yes. Comfort food. You get food. to cheat on Thanksgiving. You get hey, to by the way, by the way, you two, uh, you two crazy kids, congrats on the show. Oh, awesome thank you. Great to be a part of it. Thank you. Yeah, we wanted to try, try to create some a variety. Of a lot of, a lot of fun. fun. It is a lot of work, but I feel like we've got it. It's a great time to entertain our communities and our our viewers, and and just bring something a little different. And we have the capability to do this now that we're all virtual. It's it's this is great. So guess who's checking in? All the right, Robinson. she's gonna send the recipe. There so you it know, is. This is what we're gonna do. Obviously, we're, we're live right now. When my mom sends me the recipe, I'll post it on the various platforms. We're streaming on Twitter and Facebook and Twitch and YouTube so people can check out the famous Susie Sharo noodle cooking recipe. It's right. I'm just so glad that she is going to send the recipe in. It's worth millions. Look at that picture of my mom with Chloe. She looks like an <laughs> evil. Yeah. The cutest dog ever. Okay, Dan. Thanks, Mom. Oh, I want to remind everyone before we, we get into questions for you, I uh, want to remind everyone that we're going to be posting a lot of these recipes from our uh, show tonight on our Facebook page. So if you haven't had the opportunity yet to like our Facebook page, make sure you do so, or at least check it out within the next 24 hours. We'll, we'll have all those recipes posted. Yeah. Yay, you. Kugel! And the Kugel will be there. <laughs> okay, Dan, you're a local sports guy, right? The NFL is certainly part of Thanksgiving. The games will certainly be on at my house. Let's start with your hometown team, the Detroit Lions, who face the Houston Texans. Who do you see emerging as the winner in this game and why? Well, and I am a local sports guy, but also a local celebrity, so you left that part out, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, I, as my dad says, a regional celebrity in my own mind. Listen, it's, you know, I've been doing a lot of the uh, Lions post-game shows this year and some in-game shows, as I've done for years, uh, and 97 won the ticket, and I'll tell you, it's been, a, it's been a crazy year and a frustrating year in many different ways, and sports has, has been great, a great distraction, but also it's been a secondary thing with, you know, the very serious nature of a pandemic. But I'll tell you, this has been such a wacky year to be a Lions fan. I think there's very little chance Matt Patricia is going to make it. If they lose on Thanksgiving, there are some murmurs that I'm getting from sources I have that he could get fired, which I thought would not happen until after the season. You look at Houston, who just beat the Patriots, basically knocked them out of the playoff race and giving them their worst season in 20 years to Sean Watson. I know there's no DeAndre Hopkins, but Will Fuller, and the way that defense has played at times – I think they're a better team than the Lions, but this is the problem, one. And you're a Dolphins fan, so you're lucky. You guys had a bad loss against those silly Matt Towers, Dave Rieger Broncos over the weekend. But this, the, the problem is this is the kind of game the Lions will win. The Texans are a two-and-a-half-point favorite. All signs with Galladay being hurt and DeAndre Swift being hurt and Stafford a little banged up and all these different problems the Lions have are that the Texans will come in and win huge. But I just think the Lions are going to win this game to prolong the inevitable – and I'm not someone that ever cheers for tanking, but it will hurt their draft position. Now, the one thing you could say is there could be eight teams in the playoffs this year. And if that happens, the Lions would have a chance. But it is Thanksgiving. I do want people to have something to root for. The last time the Texans played on Thanksgiving against the Lions was the famous Jim Schwartz 
flag game where he threw the, the challenge flag. Right. He got a penalty. They lost in overtime, uh, 33 to 30 to the Texans. I think I think Detroit wins this game though, and and I know some will be frustrated with that, but it's Thanksgiving. Enjoy it while you can. Ava, growing up, I, I know you're a Jersey girl, yeah. that's really, yeah. but growing up was was the Lions game on your TV every Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, I recall the Lions. I recall <laughs> that they lost. You the recall Lions. the Lions? What did they come home? I mean, watching them over the years of Thanksgiving, but yeah, it was always a big loss, if I recall. Well, <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Ava, you and me are around the same age. We're both 25. Speaking the Lions <laughs> owned Thanksgiving forever until like the last 10 years before Patricia and Caldwell. So enough I of that. Wanted, I just wanted the best with you, Dan. Uh, here's one thing. I'm getting a lot of comments from people on the from the Facebook that aren't able to log in. Can we address that somehow? Is it live on Facebook? How can they see this? I've just well, got it's, on Facebook. It's they, live on Facebook. So they just yeah. have to like the Facebook page. Yeah. Hey, that's easy. And we are live on Facebook for everyone to see. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm getting oh, we'll run replays too. So that's no problem. Okay. Um, all right, it's also on YouTube. Tell them to go to YouTube. Oh, yeah. I'll put up just because I love you guys. If they're having trouble yeah. watching, well, actually, if they're watching, they can't see it. Ava, you can tell these multitudes of people. Just go to youtube.com slash sports edge two because maybe they're having trouble. Some Facebook settings can be wacky, but this is definitely on YouTube right now. And it's on multiple Facebooks and Twitter. So these people need to see the greatness that is. <laughs> hey, that's easy. Right. With Kugo. And right, my man. mom, my mom's sending in recipes <laughs> and Squatch fans. All right, go ahead, Lon. I'm sorry. No, my, my, my next question was really just talking about the other two conference rivalry games. We have a Baltimore chef coming up very shortly. Is this the week that the Baltimore Ravens? Oh, there she go? is. Oh, there she goes. The undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Do the do, do Steelers lose their first game? No, the Steelers don't. I mean, I've been on the Steelers since about week two. I, my preseason pick was Kansas City and New, New Orleans. I'm not going to switch from that now. But week two, I basically said I think the Steelers are the best team in the NFL. And they've proven that over and over again. They had some injury issues. A few weeks back, but Deontay Johnson's back. You know, Chase Claypool, Roethlisberger looks like he's in his 20s again. That defense is the best in the NFL. I think that the Steelers are just too much. The Ravens are not playing the way that they've played over the last, you know, let's say 20 or so games. They've showed it at times in consistency. I love Lamar Jackson. He's, he's fantastic. But in the end, the Steelers will be too much on Thanksgiving Eve. Or Thanksgiving night, I'm sorry. And then the last game, we got, I mean, the Washington football team against the Dallas Cowboys. Another conference rivalry game. game in the NFC East. I mean, who do you like? Yeah, but listen, it's it's a conference rivalry game between teams that have a combined like six wins. In the NFC East is the worst division in the history of football. I Listen, the Cowboys all of a sudden, because I thought the Eagles had the advantage. The Giants obviously have a chance. I think the Cowboys under Andy Dalton, if they, and they're going to win on Thanksgiving, if they beat Washington – I think they have the foothold on maybe winning the division at six and ten or five and eleven or I don't know. Dare I say seven and nine? But yeah, I'm going to go with the Lions in a w wacky win. Steelers actually bigger than some think. I think it's a four point spread, and I like the Cowboys minus the three. I think Dallas gets it done on Thanksgiving, and they they look like it's about as bad as bad could be going back as you know a few weeks. They still have a terrible defense, but yeah. what you saw last weekend and just kind of the way Andy Dalton was able to play. Some really solid football. That C.D. Lamb historic catch, one of the best catches you'll ever see. Zeke Elliott played well. I think that the Dallas takes down Washington with Alex Smith, who's also a great story in his own right. Almost was done with football in 2018. Gruesome great. injuries come all the way back. He's going to become that player of the year. Well, Dan, we thank you so much for the collaboration. We love working with you. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm sure I'll see you. I mean, you're more than welcome to stop by my house for a for a dinner and dessert. I mean, you're, I, you're cordially. I would love to. You only live about 10 minutes away from me. I'll wear my mask and I'll get a bunch of treats. Maybe that two plates good. of stuffing. And I'll bring some kugel. Hey, there it kugel. Is. Kugel for right. everyone. <laughs> Congrats again to you two. Uh, it's great to be a part of this. Look for great things in the future. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Dan Leach, 97 won the ticket. He is. He can be found online on Facebook, the Task Force. He also has a YouTube page. He has some great shows. And, uh, and he obviously, uh, he's... 
Not at Dan Leach 97 one on Twitter. Thanks. <laughs> He's, definitely, He's definitely not lacking uh, personality. That's for sure. No, I just love his voice. It's so <laughs> charismatic. Yep. I love him. He's funny. <laughs> lights up the lights up the show. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Um, okay. Okay, folks. It's it. now time to get back to food. You know, we started with yeah. a smoothie. Now it's salad time. All right. Mm -hmm. The beep, beep salad. This was sent in from Elisa in New Jersey. Take a look. Hi, everyone. My name is Elisa, and today I'll be sharing with you how to make a salad that I really enjoy for the holidays and practically any time, whether it's lunch, dinner, or just a treat. And I call this salad my beep beep salad. And the reason I call it that is because the ingredients follow this acronym for beep beep. There's butter lettuce, pomegranate, blue cheese, and pecans. Those are the main ingredients you'll need to remember. First of all, I start with the butter lettuce. When you go to the grocery store, you'll be able to find this butter lettuce. It usually looks like this in a plastic canister, but this is, makes it so nice and fresh when you get it and you can see the roots on it. So basically you're gonna chop off the roots and rinse it. And then you'll have these nice, beautiful giant leaves, which then what I next do, after thoroughly washing my hands, is slice it, throw in a couple of slices, nothing, you don't need to super chop finely, but just enough so you have leaves that aren't giant, and then you just throw them in your bowl. The next item, which I forgot to put out here, is blue cheese. Now, I happen to be more of a fan of feta cheese because I like Caesars and Parmesan, but this is the one salad that blue cheese is really going to be noted for its savory flavors when it's combined in conjunction with the other flavors. So, there's all kinds of brands of blue cheese. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You can feel free to um, mix them. This is a Danish blue cheese. Just throw it right on. This is another brand called Stella. Again, you want to sprinkle it right on. The most difficult ingredient is going to be the pomegranate because pomegranate is more of a seasonal fruit. So sometimes you're going to find them and they're going to be beautiful and lush. Other times they're going to be really scarce. Well, the nice thing is now many grocery stores are having them already um, seeded out from the fruit and you can buy them in canisters like I think Palm has a variety. So I've already done the hard labor of seeding this. My one suggestion with pomegranates, number one, wear something dark if you're dealing with pomegranates. You don't want them staining a white shirt. And the other tip I have is when I'm going in to chop the pomegranate, do it right down in the deep of the sink. So if there's any splatters, which there will be when you're cutting it and seeding it, it'll stay in the sink. So when you have your pomegranate seeds, those go right into the salad. You can already see the delicious combination of the savory cheese, the tartness of the pomegranate and the butter lettuce, and then another tartness is a salad dressing, which is just really plain, olive oil and vinegar. I like ones, this is a brand from Ken's that has like lemon included in it. Um, but I like things extra tart. So when I drizzle this on, I'm also going to go ahead and take the extra step and having a little lime. You can do lime, you can add lemon, but I like things a little extra tart. And I'll just spray that on. So simple, so easy, and so flavorful. Then you mix, 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 mix. <laughs> and then for the final piece de resistance, you're going to add the glazed pecans. There's all kinds of glazed pecans that you can buy. Um, I love this brand. It's called Emerald. They also have, if you don't like pecans, they have glazed walnuts, any nut. But for me, the glazed pecans are really so delicious. They make the final sweet and savory and tart mixture go. Just throw it right on top. And here you have a beautiful, delicious salad, which could be your main meal or a side dish or a dessert. So tasty for the holidays, or as I said, anytime. Enjoy my beep, beep salad.
And just remember the acronym <laughs> when you go to the grocery store. She's a natural too. My gosh. Wow, all these big personalities. And she's here, Dan's mom, actually. Hal, Asbury, they're right next door. Maybe they can get together. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you what, in Michigan, if you add cherries to that salad, we're all over it. You know, but then it would be like a BCBP salad. So it wouldn't really be the same thing. But uh, I feel like there's some versatility there if, if needed, if, you know, you're not a big pomegranate fan. It's a nice combination. It's the sweet, the, the salty, the sour, <laughs> the tangy, and it's so easy to make and it's healthy. It's actually a healthy side if you go easy on the cheese. <laughs> and the dressing, of course, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, now it's time to introduce our second guest. You know, she is a weight loss coach, caterer, the jack of all trades. Basically, she can flat out get down in the kitchen. Baltimore's own <laughs> Chef Kayla. Thank you for being hello. here. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much for the introduction. <laughs> I try my best. You know, we, 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 we went for it. Oh, there's Elisa. She's watching our show. That's so great. Hello. So, Kayla, uh, good job. I haven't met you in person. I've talked to you a couple of times while we were doing some pre-production with the show. Uh, so you're going to actually, I'm going to ask you to tell us about yourself and the services okay. you provide, but you're also going to be doing that for me, like an introduction. So yes. take, take it away. Okay, so first things first, at the core of my business, we are a catering company. We specialize in small event catering. Um, we specialize, specialize in brunch and dinner service. We do provide breakfast and lunch, but that's not our deal. Um, we also have branched over into the weight loss sector, uh, being as though I have always struggled with my weight since a child. Uh, I lost my first 45 pounds in high school, and I lost my second 45 pounds this year. That's amazing. Strictly just by changing my diet, I was not about to let COVID catch me slipping. Okay. <laughs> All right. No. Yeah. no that's definitely oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was not going to be caught slipping this COVID. So I took this time to really hone in my, you know, healthy culinary skills, really focused on my diet while I'm eating the way that I am. You know, it's really mental. A lot of people feel like if you just go to the gym and maybe drink a shake or something like that, it should be that easy. But I've learned during COVID that it's really, really a lot more to that. And I would like to educate more people on that. So weight, losing weight isn't such a task. I love it. That's so great. That's so great. Your website is awesome. I, I, I had a chance to look at it. And I didn't know. <laughs> there's, there's so much information on there. And, and one thing that speaks to me is that um, it, you, you're, you're not like a specialist in one thing. I mean, you, you are very versatile. You can do a lot of different things. So yes. very, very impressive. Now I know our, my guy, Dan Leach was just on and and he picked the Steelers to win, right? I heard. <laughs> but rumor has it you're cooking for some of the Ravens players on Thanksgiving. We don't have to name yeah. their names, but what's yeah. on that menu? They uh, first things first, everything is on the menu. Okay. <laughs> this uh, particular player put his Thanksgiving bid in, I'm going to say, before Halloween. So maybe like October the 15th. He's like, are you free still? And I'm like, yeah, you caught me. You have the whole day. So I'll be cooking a whole turkey. We'll be having dressing, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, mac and cheese, green beans, the Brussels sprouts that are featured, um, a chocolate cake, I believe, a sweet potato pie, and maybe a chocolate cake. <laughs> See, I, yeah, I, know, I know what you're doing there because I, I was recently in Baltimore myself and I was at a friend's, this is how we met. And he had some of that chocolate rum cake, and he, and it was only you know, a couple days past. He said, "Listen, you got to try a piece of it." I think I had like three. It was the bomb. I so that, that bomb. Yeah, it was really good. It was awesome. And and the fact that uh, you mentioned already the Brussels sprout bacon, it's, these are roasted bacon Brussels, right? Yes, it is super quick, super easy, which is why it's on the list next to all of those you know heavy hitters. Um, you cook your bacon. Drain your fat off, put your cut Brussels sprouts in the pan. I deglaze with a little bit of water because I didn't have chicken stock on hand. Um, add your Brussels in, bring them up to a little bit of a boil. The water will cook off. You will add your glaze, which I'm going to send you the recipe for. I forgot to do that. I'm sorry. You pour in your glaze and your bacon. And you let those things bubble up together and you have the best 
if you are not a Brussels sprout eater or if you have someone at your gathering who is just like, mm, no, Brussels sprouts. If you can figure out a way to get these into their mouth, They'll, it's they over. Never, they will never. I've turned a many a Brussels sprout hater out with this recipe. See, I love the fact you had mentioned there. These are roasted bacon Brussels, but it's the second part that is so interesting. When you said with an apricot balsamic awesome. reduction glaze, yeah, yeah see, that was it's over I, right there. I was like, I'm interested. I mean, that sounds like a little bit of everything. That's so. right. It has the. Sour from the balsamic, you have the sweetness from the apricot, you have the salty, fatty unctuousness from the bacon, and you have some crisp because the Brussels sprouts still have a little bit of bite to them. So you have that texture and that freshness. And if you have a little bit of lemon on hand, perhaps I don't know. Maybe. You know what I, was, what I thought was really cool about that final picture was in the background, you didn't have real specific brand names on your those are everyday brands oh, yeah. And yeah and i i that's one of the first things i noticed i go you know that's really cool because i feel like a lot of times when we watch chefs it's something that i i can't even get on amazon you know that specific and brand. right now with covid i know that a grocery shopping is going to be a, a headache as a whole you know just trying to stay safe while still getting everything that you need without getting too close to someone else also trying to get what you need um i wanted to make sure that i included ingredients that you can find anywhere walmart those are great value brand products each and every last one of them um it's a walmart everywhere literally everywhere. yeah <laughs> and those are simple household ingredients that even if you didn't uh, say if you just bought those ingredients for this particular recipe, there'll be things that you'll use on a regular basis. Like I like to take some balsamic vinegar and sprinkle it over a pizza with the crushed red pepper flakes and some parm. Boom. Pow. You've utilized two of those ingredients already. Take the apricots and some uh, jalapenos. Apricot jalapeno chicken. It's delicious. You're just repurposing everything. I love it. That's I'm so all good. about the saving of the coin. Yes. Hey, it's it's important, especially nowadays. Tis the season of saving your coins. Yes. All right. I only have two more questions for you. You All mentioned right. weight loss coaching yes. earlier. Um, and uh, again, you know, tell tell viewers where they can find you. Um, you can find me on www.chefkjv.com. I'm also on Instagram under the handle official chef. Kayla Vaughn, as well as Facebook under Chef Kayla Vaughn. So as long as you know my name and you have a Google, you can find me. I'm Excellent. on Yelp as well. I'm on Pinterest. Pretty much I'm everywhere. It's kind of creepy, but Google me. <laughs> <laughs> my good friend, was, that's how he found you, was on Yelp. And he said your reviews were amazing. Um, so I can... And then we found you. So that's that's awesome. My last question. I mean, we got to counteract Mr. Leach's prediction here. So I know you're rooting for the Ravens if you're cooking. Of course. Of course. Of course. I mean, I have seen. Yeah. 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 Put some Google in that mouth. Put some Google in that mouth. Put some Google in that mouth. That's what you're going to need. Your wounds when my Ravens take this home. Yeah. Cue the Google. Kill the Google. Hey, I love the Ravens. Quote them nevermore. Those Steelers, though, top six. I, listen, I am a realist. I am, you know, I'm going to give credit what credit is due. I definitely feel like they are our top contender in this, you know, I feel like it'll be a fair fight. But Something you get all good. In my heart. <laughs> am I, am I, I always pick the line? I believe her. <laughs> here in this area, we got it. I just feel like, you know, granted, yes, we've had some ups and downs this season. On this season, just like everybody else's season, is unlike any season we've ever played before. Um, Preseason was unlike anything we've ever seen before. I feel like, you know, when the chips are down, we'll have to see if that turkey slows those Steelers down, you know. <laughs> my guys are eating the day after Thanksgiving. They're not eating on Thanksgiving Day. No pressure. <laughs> they're not going to slow those guys down. But Juan and Ava, I think one, one thing we can definitely agree on is that, she, that Kayla's an amazing chef. I want those Brussels sprouts now, like yes. yesterday. So please, I please will... dry some and cryo-freeze them and ship them right over. 
Yes. <laughs> she's, listen, she's a weight loss coach. She's a chef and she's a sports analyst. We're just shout out to Chef Caleb on. We really appreciate you. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna definitely uh, holler at you in January. We're gonna we're putting together a show now on fitness. Yes. We feel like you know, be you being a weight loss coach, it would be a great compliment to that show. So uh, we'll be in touch. Happy Thanksgiving. Ed are made in the kitchen and shaped in the gym. You I cannot can train a bad diet. It does not matter how many times you go to the gym. If you're eating crap, you are going to look the same. 80-20, yeah. 80-20, <laughs> every day of the week. Like right now, I'll be spending 2021 in the gym just so that I'm not, you know, jiggly. But <laughs> the weight loss came from my diet. Like the numbers on the scale, the what people are looking for mm -hmm. came from my diet. It did not come from the gym. It came strictly from watching what I was putting on my plate. So if I can really drive that point home, in addition to the importance of exercise, I would. I can't wait to be a part of the life-changing process in June, January. I love it. Thank you so much, Kayla. We appreciate you. Again, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I, I'm going to root for the Ravens, too. I'm just saying. Because you know. Baltimore. <laughs> exactly. You know. Like, thank you guys for having me. I can't wait to see you guys again. Um, quick question. Will I get a copy of this live stream? You where sure will. Yep. Where can I find this? Yeah, we're going to post it on our Facebook page, and then uh, we'll definitely send you a copy. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing you again and enjoy your holiday. Stay safe. Yes, you do the Stay same. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Oh, wow. What a breath of fresh air she was. I know. Uh, every, everyone on this show so far has had so much energy. I love it. Uh, and now we're on to the next dish. And, and this next one is for right. you know, those that are being conscious of their diet this Thanksgiving. We just oh. talked about <laughs> you know weight loss management, right? Uh, so here's Sarah, with our fitness expert, with just a little bit more. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you a quick, easy main dish for Thanksgiving that is vegan. And it's super, super easy. Stuffed acorn squash. We're going to stuff it with some black rice. If you don't have black rice, you can use any wild rice or even brown rice. But I wouldn't use white rice because that'll get too mushy. We're also going to put in some cranberries, apples, celery, and sage, and onion. It's super, super quick to make. You can even make it a couple days before and then just throw it in the oven for 30 minutes after you stuff acorn. Okay, so I have now halved and scraped out all the seeds of the acorn squash, and I'm just going to rub them with some olive oil, salt and pepper. Right. And you're gonna place these with the cut side down on the sheet pan. All right. Now you're going to place these in a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes on or until they are fork tender. All right. And while they're roasting, we're going to make our rice and our other mixture that's going to be going into the rice. Cook the rice according to the package directions, and then we're going to saute an onion, some celery, and then the, add the cranberries, sage, apples, all together, and it's going to be amazing. All right, so while the acorn squash is cooking, I'm just going to saute the onions, garlic, celery, a little spinach, cranberries. And after these cook down, I'm gonna add in the rice and some sage and fill up those acorn squash. All right, guys, the acorn squash are roasted. So now we turn our oven down to 350. Don't they look beautiful? Ooh. And then we're gonna pop 
pop them back in the oven for another 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so the acorns are stuffed with the rice mixture, and we're going to pop them back in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes on 350. Super simple, guys. I hope you try it and save some turkeys this year. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay, I, I'll, full disclosure, I will absolutely try that dish. I would imagine the flavors together would be absolutely amazing. It looks beautiful. I mean, that, that was one of my favorite to kind of see at the end because it's the presentation of it is so beautiful. Um, and it looks a little more complicated than say the beep beep salad. <laughs> yeah. I would definitely say that. <laughs> That's so, that's so good. I mean, like I said, you yeah. mentioned how the presentation, I mean, a lot of food, that, that's what it is, but the, the ingredients she kept adding to that pan, I literally was thinking to myself, I like every single one of those ingredients. I just mm -hmm. imagine yeah. the flavor burst with all that together. Really cool. Yeah. Rice and yeah, the squash and the cranberries and it's, oh, it, everything about it. Delicious. I'm definitely going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> all right well hey let's let's keep the party going you know the next dish, the next dish is for all those viewers that are swapping out the turkey uh for an alternative this thanksgiving and not on not on the vegan side check out tom's roasted salmon roasted salmon yeah. uh in a butter garlic parsley sauce with a little bit of lemon uh zest and uh, it's going to be delicious. Right, so we have our uh, melted, uh, softened butter here. We're just going to take a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and we're going to take some lemon. We're going to squeeze it on in there. We're going to take our minced garlic, toss that in there a little bit, about a about half a spoonful. And we've got our parsley here. I'm just going to chop it up. I like to chop mine up kind of fine. <laughs> Sprinkle it on in there. Mix it all up. Got a nice little fine paste going here. Take our spoon. We're going to scoop it. Oh. You want to get really fancy with this. You can add a, asparagus or broccoli to the side. Adds a nice little flavor to it. And this you're going to put in the oven for about 10 minutes at 400 degrees. And then after 10 minutes, you're going to put the broiler on and put it in the broiler for about two to four minutes. This way it gets really nice and crisp and so forth, and it's ready to serve. All right, so uh, our 10 minutes have gone by. We're just going to take a quick peek. You want to take a look at that real quick. All right, and then we're going to shut off our oven and set the broiler on high. I've never done that. And uh, we're going to put our timer on. Oh. We'll put it on there for three minutes. All right. And we just uh, we made a little salad here with uh, some Melody uh, type tomatoes and uh, Parmesan cheese, shaved almonds with a raspberry vinaigrette and dried cherries and a chicken fried rice. So bon appetit. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Well, that seemed easy enough. I mean, is that a dish that uh, you would go for there, Ava? You know, I've never really been a big fish person, but salmon is delicious. And it is um, very easy to make. I was surprised. I thought that was a complicated, what, 13 minutes to cook altogether? That's yeah. And then again, you, you know, if you're limiting, limiting the dairy again, you can use like an earth balance butter or something like that. That's healthy. Yeah. Provide, right. So, and all those ingredients, I, I like the fact that he chopped everything uh, right from scratch or the garlic and, and the lemon. That was, that looked really good. And now I, I feel like, gosh, when you go to a restaurant and pay all that money for those, you're thinking, wow, I could probably do that at home. Absolutely. And again, a, a natural, like rich and 
Alisa and Sarah, they're all just so great on camera. So I just, I love that. We've been very lucky, Lawton. <laughs> yeah, we have. Well, well, up until now, and I'm gonna be honest. So what's left is of course dessert, right? And full disclosure uh, on this one, Lori from Grand Rapids is my mom, all right? She ah. refused to be on camera, right? But I had to have her make this dessert. When we were having our original production meeting, um, she makes this thing called the Heath Bar dessert. And I, I, I just thought, gosh, we got we got to feature this. So this is, you know, this is us out in the store going shopping right here, okay? Uh, lady fingers is what you're looking at. They're like a little, uh, like almost like pound cake. Just a few ingredients. You got the lady fingers, you got Cool Whip that you see there. And then of course there's this instant pistachio jello, all right? Easy to find. And down that same aisle, you can find most of the time uh, any chocolate toppings. But this is a Heath Bar dessert, right? So uh, you got you got to get the Heath Bars, and and it's it's really super easy to make. So you can see all the supplies there on the countertop. Now this was a, a dessert back in the day when I was young. I would see it at my aunt's house, so I got to give my aunt credit. And my mom, you know, she perfected it, and uh, it goes right there in a thirteen by nine pan, so you can make it at home, put it in the fridge, let it. Uh, uh, let it cool for about six to eight hours and and take it over to wherever you're going if you if you want to bring a dish. So yeah. obviously you can see uh, good old Lori there. Uh, it's kind of weird calling her that, but you know it, she's she's just putting the uh, Jello into the bowl, and um, and you can see it's this doesn't take long to make at all. Um, adding the milk, we talked about this too. It's probably not a nut free dish but you could use almond milk in place of milk if you were looking to limit the dairy i know cool whip actually has some alternatives as well um they i know they haven't i've seen almond whipping cream as as well so that's something i don't think it would really dynamically change the flavor at all um so obviously you're she's whipping it together there you're mixing it up with the spatula using the hand mixer and you and you kind of get it till it thickens and you're going to see in just a minute she's going to add some cool whip to it but before she does that, she lets it set. You have to spread the bottom of the pan with Cool Whip. And the Cool Whip's actually got to be, you know, you get it from the frozen section. You don't want it to be real loose when you're spreading it on this pan. Um, now, the other container of Cool Whip you want for the topping, and you'll see it's pretty easy. You spread it out. Now, you say, well, you're going to dig in, and, and it, there's no, no real crust or bottom. Well, this dessert's meant to be like a light dessert after a Thanksgiving dinner. You know what I mean? And I mentioned earlier, uh, she would be adding Cool Whip back to that that mix. And that's really just to thicken it up a little bit more. So that way um, it will spread a little more evenly. And shortly, she's going to uh, take the lady fingers out of the package. And her biggest recommendation, it was so funny, she was very serious about this. She said, listen, you can't just put all five of them in. you got to place the lady fingers in the pan separately. That's a big deal. <laughs> so... That way you get even coverage. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's also if you dig in and you cut it and they're all sticking together, you might uh, you might take a really large end up taking a really large piece, and <laughs> it, it wouldn't be very nice sharing, right? So you just do the first layer of the lady fingers, and then simple enough, you take your spatula and spread on the pistachio jello mix, and uh, and you're going to continue to do this. I had to fix. I had to pitch this for the dessert idea. Let me tell you, there's so many folks that have. We have actually now started making this every Thanksgiving at our house as one of the three main desserts, and everyone says, "What is that? I've never had that so good." And all of us always chuckle because it's so easy to make. But it's one of those things where if I'm bringing a dish or a dessert, I'm bringing this all day long, and I guarantee results. You know, people will be very happy, unless they're a nut-free person or. They're on a super diet and they can't have chocolate or toffee or, or anything like that. Some great remixes to this dessert as well. My mom made a mention that if you don't like the pound cake, um, you don't like the lady fingers, you can always um, whip this into um, on top of a graham cracker crust and make it like a like a cream pie. Um, and then you can top it with whatever you want. But uh, to keep the Heath Bar title, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going that route. And as you can see, that's that second bowl of Cool Whip that she has that's a lot more, uh, it's not as frozen, right? It's just, it spreads on really easy. And then we're almost there. Uh, we're almost to the point of topping it off, right? And uh, once once we get it all done there, um, you're going to see to not make a mess 
you know, you take these heat bars and just put them in a plastic bag. And um, I think uh, if I remember, she had a, I don't know if she had a real hammer or a, like a like a meat tenderizer or something because you obviously want to break them up and uh, and this will this will this will not make such a mess, right? It's real easy to spread after this, and uh, and that's it. And then the big recommendation is you can serve. We serve this um, we serve this up right away, but this is the key: placing in that dessert in the refrigerator because it has to kind of come come together itself. My mom also recommended that the Heath bars should be actually added closer to the time of serving. But for this purpose, you can see it's a little loose, but um, I will, I will full disclosure. I had two pieces while I was sitting there after we were done. Uh, my mom brewed some coffee and we had, we had a good time, but I was so I'd glad. Like some, please immediately. Thank you. Yeah. I, we're definitely making this. It's, it's good stuff. And you can see the, it's just a few ingredients. Of course, we'll put that recipe on the Facebook page, but uh, shout out to my mom. You know, she allowed us to, uh, allowed me to drive up there for the day and uh, film her doing that. And it's good stuff. So that's so awesome, Lawton. It was so impressive. Yeah. I was like, are they going to add another layer? There's so many <laughs> layers. I mean, delicious, easy to make. <laughs> I love pistachio, actually. It's one of those flavors that, you know, you love it or you hate it, I guess, but I love it. Um, so easy to make. Your mom is awesome. And that yeah, she really is. No, she, and, and like I said, that, that was a dessert at all of our family gatherings when I was younger, whether it was. Thanksgiving or Christmas, um, you know, my aunt and uncle used to kind of all alternate who would host each year. And uh, without doubt, that that Heath Bar dessert was there every time. And it was one of those things that my brothers and I always enjoyed uh, getting on. Just reminds us of Thanksgiving or any kind of holiday. Yep, yep it's the tradition. That's those things we're going to miss this year when we can't get together and do the potluck and everything. So um, awesome. Yeah. Your mom. Just a, great. just a reminder, you see it on the screen. You can find all the recipes from tonight's show right on our Facebook page. We encourage you to like the Hey, That's Easy page. If you can't find it, just search Facebook, Hey, That's Easy, um, and, and you should be able to find us on there. And we're going to continue bringing you these variety-type shows. Uh, we're working on a show right now uh, that's kind of about halfway into production. Um, we're working on uh, a half fitness and a half weight loss. And that is so great that uh, we had Kayla on tonight, and she can help us out going forward as well. So uh, not just from a cooking standpoint, but maybe from uh, a weight loss standpoint. What do you think about that? Everybody's thinking about it. The New Year's resolution is always weight loss, right? And uh, with COVID, <laughs> I think uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of that need to kind of shed as we move forward. <laughs> um, so I think it'll come right at the perfect time. Kayla would be great. I'm sure there's lots of people who can send in more useful videos and tips like last time. I mean, there's some great experts out there. Um, so I'm excited. Yes, absolutely. It's time to do it. <laughs> and the only, the only thing I, I, I'm giving, uh, leaving it up to our viewers, you know, if there's something you want to see us do, please let us know. Uh, we're, we're thinking about adding a, a, a dish to every single show, whether it's, you know, a hot dish or, or rather a dessert. And there's so many things that this show could become. We just wanted to give you a little more variety. And I, I felt like we, we did our, we did our due diligence today. We had sports people on, we had cooks, we had food. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we even, uh, could have done it without you. So thank you so much for, uh, for being on. We, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I, always a great time. Great Alliance. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. For Ava Anvari, Dan Leach, Chef Kayla, and all of our guests, everyone that sent in videos, thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving to you, and we'll see you next time.